Hello, Scrum Masters. Welcome to Enterprise Agile Team. This is the second of two main lectures in this section. And previously, we've talked about mindset and heart set, your daily, weekly, and monthly rhythms, how to facilitate and peaceful communication. Here's what we're going to do in this lecture. We're going to talk about what is an Enterprise Agile Team, why having an Enterprise Agile Team is so helpful, how to set up the team, and how to measure the team's progress. And at the end of this lecture, you'll know exactly how and why to set up a team. So let's start off with just defining what an Enterprise Agile Team is. The team's vision is to implement Scrum in our organization. Now, organization can be anything. It could be a team, it could be a business unit, it could be an enterprise, it could be an entire business ecosystem. Whatever component is building Scrum, that's what we call the Enterprise Agile Team. Other names for it are the Agile Steering Committee. I don't like that name so much. I prefer the word team to committee or the Agile Transition Team. So that's what the Enterprise Agile Team does. Its job is to implement Scrum, to transition the organization to Scrum. So why create an Enterprise Agile Team? So my experience is that management often grossly underestimates the amount of money, skill, and time needed to transition a team to Scrum. In the first three to six months, my experience is that a single Scrum team needs approximately 10 hours per week of consulting, coaching, and training. And so management is often wholly unaware of what is needed to transition an enterprise to Scrum, which of course is a whole bunch of team level work plus a whole bunch of enterprise level work. To give one specific example, I spent five months at one organization with two other agile consultants coaching a 200 person organization on Scrum. And I think that three consultants for that 200 person organization was too few. So this is a multi-person effort to transition an enterprise to Agile. So here's a Salesforce case study which describes how much effort is needed to transition an organization to Scrum. So Salesforce transitioned its entire organization in a three-month period of time. They had a dedicated cross-functional rollout team. Dedicated, of course, means that they were 100% on this team and it was cross-functional, not just engineering. They distributed Ken Schraber's Agile book to everyone. They sent 65 people to certification training. They created their own internal website, and they had executive commitment from Parker Harris, the founder and EVP, who reported directly to the CEO. This is an example of the commitment required to transition an enterprise to Scrum don't underestimate the effort needed. This is why an enterprise agile team or an agile transition team is so critical to the success of an agile rollout. So big mistake number one, here's the thing that I see companies do. They say, let the engineering manager do it. You're the manager of all these folks. You want to run Scrum, go ahead and do it. Now let's imagine that you're trying to transition a 50 person organization to Scrum. That's six teams approximately. Well, using my rule of thumb of 10 hours per week per team, that's 60 hours per week. So it's already more than a full-time job. And the engineering manager already has a full-time job. So the likelihood that this transition is going to be as successful as it could be is just very low. And then critically, the engineering manager is not cross-functional. What about the product organization? What about HR? What about all of the other functional areas that need to change and transform for a Scrum transition to be successful? This doesn't work very well. I've never seen it work. An enterprise agile team is a much better way to do it. Big mistake number two that I see is that they train one person. They send one person to a two-day certification training program and they have them transition the organization. Even transforming a single team is essentially impossible. There's a huge difference between going to a two-day training which defines what Scrum is and tells you what it is and being able to coach a team and an organization to Scrum. I can tell the difference between a beautiful painting and a not-so-beautiful painting 
but I certainly couldn't coach someone on creating a beautiful painting. That's the difference between someone who's gone to two days of training and an enterprise agile team. The person who's gone to two days of training can say this is scrum or not scrum, but you need an enterprise agile team to transition an organization to scrum. So step number one is build the team. There are three roles, scrum master, product owner, and development team. Who are they going to be? Who is the scrum master going to be? Is it you? Do you want this role to be taken by a person who has organizational authority? The best enterprise rollout I've ever seen, all of the scrum masters reported to the CIO and the CIO was the enterprise scrum master. And the CIO, of course, reported directly to the CEO and they would discuss scrum at their board meetings. Who is the product owner? It's often the person who's paying the bills. It's definitely not the same as the person who's the VP of product. Remember, the VP of product is the head of the product effort. The product owner of the enterprise agile team is the person who drives the backlog for the enterprise scrum rollout. Who is the development team? Absolutely make sure that it's cross-functional. HR, sales, marketing, business development, product, engineering, all need to be represented on the development team. And these people should have scrum adoption as part of their job description or their key performance objectives. Otherwise, it's going to be something that they do on the side and they just won't have enough time to make it successful. I suggest that you get all of the relevant parties together for a one hour meeting to hash this out. Who is going to be on the team? And then build out your sprint calendar. I recommend a sprint length of one week starting on Wednesday with the planning meeting and then ending on Tuesday with the review and retrospective. It needs to be the most important thing that these people are doing. If we're talking about executives, if it isn't the most important thing that they're doing, there will never be a sprint with a full team. They'll always be interrupting themselves and the agile transition won't be successful. The planning meeting is typically a two hour meeting. You can often get it down to 90 minutes with this group of people once your backlog and velocity are known. I recommend doing sizing in the meeting itself if you're going to be sizing the backlog items. There's no need to have an extra conversation with these folks. They're doing it in one week sprints so they can do it inside of the planning meeting. And then get input from the team scrum masters for this backlog. One way to think about it is that the impediment and improvement backlog at the team level becomes the enterprise team's product backlog. So the review, I encourage you to invite everyone in the company to look at this, everyone who's involved in Scrum, who is touched by Scrum, so that they can see the effort that the executives, the senior folks are putting in to adopting Scrum, and everyone can see that this is a serious change. And then discuss Scrum adoption release dates. These are the equivalent of software release dates. When are the backlogs going to be ready? When are the team rooms going to be ready? Are you going to implement engineering practices like TDD? These are the sorts of items that will appear on the enterprise agile team's product backlog. And so make it visible when these things are going to be ready to everyone in the company. And finally, the retrospective. When you go into this retrospective, understand that VP level and C level dysfunctions are going to come to light. Be prepared for that. Use peaceful communication in these situations. Ask yourself, how are impediments going to be removed? At the team level, we often think about escalating to managers, but here we're talking about the enterprise team. So there's no one to escalate to. So they're ultimately responsible for removing all impediments to the Scrum rollout. And then how is the action plan implemented? Is it going to be delegated to folks? Are you going to be focusing just on the people inside of the de that development team? And then finally, keep track of your Scrum maturity because that's the job of the Enterprise Agile team to implement more and more of Scrum throughout the organization. One thing to do is to use the Nokia test, which I've attached as supplementary material or something similar. And of course, make sure that the maturity metrics are visible so everyone knows where they stand and all of the team members themselves know where they stand on the road to Scrum. So what's next in this section? You've got a bunch of homework assignments that will help you to set up the Enterprise Agile team. Summarize, you've learned what an Enterprise Agile team is, you've learned why it's helpful, and you've learned how to create an Enterprise Agile team, and you have learned how to measure its progress. So best wishes, and I'll see you at the next section.